V lies the crown. Sort of thing. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're focusing on 21st century dramas, or at least dramedies, that left an impression at the Academy Awards. Many even won Best Picture, while others should have. Every rejection, every disappointment has led you here to this moment. 2000 Gladiator. What we do in life echoes in eternity. Gladiator harkens back to Ben-Hur, Lawrence of Arabia, and other epics that dominated the Oscars. Some would say that it breathed new life into the sword and sandal genre. Since its release, though, Hollywood has struggled to recapture the majesty of Ridley Scott's historical magnum opus. Despite being a production nightmare, Gladiator had all the right ingredients. A first-class below-the-line team, a devious villain in Joaquin Phoenix's Commodus, and Russell Crowe giving an iconic turn as Maximus. Crow's Best Actor victory rounded out the film's five wins. The only downside to its Best Picture triumph? Scott wasn't a producer, so he didn't receive a gold statue. Whether or not Scott finally gets his due with Gladiator 2, the original struck the ideal balance between crowd-pleaser and academy-pleaser. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? 2001, A Beautiful Mind. Personally, I think this class will be a waste of your, and what is infinitely worse, my time. Russell Crowe is among the few actors to headline back-to-back -back Best Picture winners. While he didn't win another Best Actor Oscar, Crowe's portrayal of famed mathematician John Nash speaks to his range. Whereas Maximus was a physically demanding role, Nash's mind is the arena of this biographical drama. Director Ron Howard exquisitely conveys Nash's mental anguish, as well as the intricate thought process that made him such a complex, not to mention beautiful mind. The film received two more Oscars for Akiva Goldsman's screenplay, which effortlessly blends love story with physiological thriller, and Jennifer Connelly's supporting performance as Alicia Nash, who provides the story's emotional anchor. Crow carries much of the film, serving as a vessel for us to experience the world through Nash's eyes. I don't know anything. My name is John Nash. I'm being held against my will. Somebody call the Department of Defense. 2002, The Pianist. Here in the large ghetto, it's a cesspool. You ought to give me something to do. You're an artist, Roderick. You keep people's spirits up. You do enough. I want to help. I want to do something. Like Roxy Hart's acquittal, Chicago's Best Picture win was practically preordained. For a moment, it appeared the pianist might pull a surprise, winning Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Actor for Adrian Brody, and Best Director for Roman Polanski. The latter has only become more controversial, but judging the pianist purely on its merits, nobody can deny its soul-stirring resonance. The film is unrelenting in its depiction of Nazi evil, with the build-up to a tragedy being almost as gut-wrenching as the outcome. What the film captures above all else is the sense of being powerless. Fighting back isn't an option for Władysław Spielmann. All he can do is hide as his people risk extinction, the one escape being the music at the edge of his fingertips. You must get away at once. Why do you want me to go? Look at me. I'm not leaving. Can't I take my chances here? 2003, Lost in Translation. We'd have to first get out of this bar, then the hotel, then the city, and then the country. Are you in or are you out? Lost in Translation is about the transitional periods that often pop up in unexpected places. Bob and Charlotte find each other in Tokyo. While their romance is bound to be brief, both walk away having awakened something within themselves. The same can be said about Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. Murray, always the funny man, dug deep to unearth an uncharted dramatic side, earning a Best Actor nomination. Johansson, meanwhile, matured from former child star to an adult actress prepared to take Hollywood by storm. In Bob and Charlotte, Sofia Coppola found her voice as a filmmaker. While nothing could impede Return of the King's sweep, Coppola made history as the first American woman to be nominated for Best Director in addition to winning Best Original Screenplay. I just don't know what I'm supposed to be. You know? I tried being a writer, but I hate what I write. 2004, Million Dollar Baby. Problem is, this is the only thing I ever felt good doing. If I'm too old for this, then I got nothing. That enough truth to suit you? 
Clint Eastwood's devastating sports drama was something of a late-surging Oscar underdog. It didn't win the Golden Globe for Best Picture, the SAG Award for Best Cast, or any BAFTAs. Regardless, you could feel the swelling passion for this little movie about an ambitious female boxer and her gruff trainer. The heartwarming father-daughter relationship that develops between the two makes it all the more heartbreaking when the story takes an unexpected turn. From there, it's all downhill as we cry our way to the credits. By Oscar night, it was a foregone conclusion that Morgan Freeman would win his first Oscar for his earnest supporting performance, while Hilary Swank picked up her second. Eastwood was the evening's biggest champ, though, winning Best Director and Picture. You know, when you quit all this... You mean boxing? No, I'll never quit. I like the stink too much, I guess. 2005, Brokeback Mountain. This is a one-shot thing we got going on here. It's nobody's business but ours. Speaking of Oscar surprises, people might be forgiving towards Crash's Best Picture upset had it not come at the expense of the perceived frontrunner. Brokeback Mountain was not only the more groundbreaking film upon release, but history remembers it as one of the century's most genuine romances. Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal deliver gut-wrenchingly honest performances as star-crossed lovers whose romance is restricted to Brokeback Mountain. Even then, their safe haven can only shield them from the world's prejudices for so long, building to a powerhouse of an ending. The Academy might not have been ready to embrace LGBTQ plus cinema fully, but Brokeback Mountain still took significant steps with wins for Best Score, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Director for Ang Lee. I wish I knew how to quit you. Then why don't you? 2006, The Departed. We have a question. Do you want to be a cop, or do you want to appear to be a cop? It's an honest question. After directing two period pieces that came up short in the Best Picture department, Martin Scorsese returned to his crime epic roots with The Departed. What initially seemed like Scorsese's popcorn flick wound up gaining him entry into the Best Director winner circle. Taking home Best Picture as well, The Departed encompasses what Scorsese does best, exploring the nuances of good and evil with two men living lies on opposite sides of the law. Thus ensues an intense game of cat and mouse, where even dead silence over the phone line leaves us on edge. William Monaghan's Oscar-winning dialogue is where the film shines the most, emerging as one of Scorsese's funniest movies while remaining a hard-hitting drama at its core. A lot of people had to die for me to be me. You want to be me? I probably could be you, yeah. Yeah, I know that much. 2007, No Country for Old Men. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss. In this Coen Brothers crime western, Tommy Lee Jones's Sheriff Bell concludes that the world no longer has a place for a traditional lawman such as himself. To an extent, this reflected the Academy's changing tastes when they awarded No Country for Old Men four Oscars, including Best Picture. In a pantheon of costume dramas, epic love stories, and inspirational biopics, No Country was a much darker Best Picture winner, with no light at the end of the tunnel. Rather than embrace escapism, the Academy gravitated toward a film that mirrored the state of our world where violence can be as random as a coin flip, and the clean-cut hero doesn't always bring the villain to justice. A bold winner for a less innocent era. Call it. The coin don't have no say. It's just you. 2008, Slumdog Millionaire. So, Mr. Malik, the man who knows all the answers. Talk. Following one of the bleakest Best Picture winners, the Academy went all in on one of the most uplifting. Slumdog Millionaire's joyous ending isn't easily earned, however. An Oliver Twist story with more than a few twists, Jamal's life brings one hardship after another. The dream that he'll eventually be reunited with his love Latika gets him through the day, but every step closer brings another challenge. It isn't until Jamal lands a spot on a game show that his years of struggles build towards something positive. Be it fate or coincidence, Jamal's journey leaves us all hopeful that even at our lowest, fortunes can change. With eight Oscars overall, Danny Boyle's film remains one of the most celebrated Best Picture winners of recent times. This is our destiny. Yes. 
2009, The Hurt Locker. Negative, negative. Stand down. The blast will come up the block. Stand clear around the corner. EOD has the situation under control. Over. Catherine Bigelow's war drama marked several milestones. In addition to breaking the glass ceiling in Best Director, it was the first female-helmed film to win Best Picture. This was also the first film about the Iraq War to take the Academy's top prize. While the Oscars had honored war dramas in the past, The Hurt Locker stood out with its emphasis on mental health. William James, played by Jeremy Renner in a Best Actor-nominated performance, appears unfazed by the idea of blowing up. Gazing into James's mind and soul, we see the toll that warfare has taken on him. Bomb defusal is so ingrained in James's DNA that he can no longer function in a domestic setting, exposing the cost of war. You know they need more bomb techs. Wanna chop those up for me? 2010, The Social Network. As for any charges stemming from the breach of security, I believe I deserve some recognition from this board. Uh, I'm sorry? Yes. Occasionally, the Academy finds itself divided between the old guard and the new. The old guard prevailed this year, resulting in an underwhelming victory for the King's Speech. The Social Network still won three Oscars, including one for Aaron Sorkin's invigorating screenplay. The fact that it didn't win Best Picture or Director, though, marks a misfire on par with Citizen Kane's Oscar snub. Fittingly, the film's depiction of Mark Zuckerberg echoes Charles Foster Kane. Both practically take over the world, making vast fortunes in the process. There are some things that money can't buy. In Kane's case, it's his lost childhood. For Zuckerberg, it's the ability to form human connections. His creation offers a new means to connect, but it's equally a source of isolation. You have part of my attention. You have the minimum amount. The rest of my attention is back at the offices of Facebook, where my colleagues and I are doing things that no one in this room, including and especially your clients, are intellectually or creatively capable of doing. 2011, Hugo. I need my notebook. Why do you need it so badly? To help me. To fix something. Nostalgia seemed to be the overarching theme of the 84th Academy Awards. The silent comedy The Artist won Best Picture, while Hugo scored the most nominations, ultimately winning five. At first, it might come as a surprise that Martin Scorsese directed this 3D family film about an orphaned boy searching for his place in the world. Scorsese's signature shines through, however, as Hugo evolves into a celebration of cinema. The story blends history and fiction without ever diving into pure fantasy. Yet Hugo manages to become one of the most magical movie-going experiences of recent memory, creating a world born for the silver screen. It's about the importance of film and why it'll be up to the next generation to preserve the sacred art form. Thank you for the movie today. It was a gift. 2012, Argo. I fly into Tehran. We all fly out together as a film crew. Done. Many questioned if Argo could go all the way at the Oscars after Ben Affleck was shockingly left out of the Best Director lineup. In a way, the buzz surrounding that omission might have helped the film's odds. Argo went on to be awarded for Chris Terrio's thrilling screenplay, William Goldenberg's tight editing, and Best Picture, giving Affleck his moment after several years of climbing back to A-list status. Although modern critics dwell on the historical inaccuracies, arguably the most far-fetched part of the film is true. At the center of this rescue operation was a fake movie and a plan crazy enough to work. Argo is a testament to the power of cinema and how it can impact the world in unexpected ways. The United States government has just sanctioned your science fiction movie. 2013, 12 Years a Slave. Days ago, I was with my family in my home. Now you tell me all is lost. In 1977, Roots explored the atrocities of slavery in ways that the visual medium had never touched upon before. 36 years after that TV miniseries, the film industry finally delivered a cinematic equivalent. One day, Solomon Northup is a free man living prosperously with his family. The next, he's a slave, enduring the same hell every day for 12 years. It's horrific enough to be something out of a horror story, but Steve McQueen's Best Picture winner is history. The raw honesty of John Ridley's Oscar-winning screenplay is further elevated by Chiwetel Ejiofor's strong-willed yet vulnerable portrayal of Solomon, Michael Fassbender's horrifying performance as a cruel plantation owner, and Lupita Nyong'o's Best Supporting Actress caliber feature debut as Patsy. 500 pounds of cotton, day in, day out. More than any man here. 
and for that I will be clean. That's all I ask. 2014, Birdman. We had it all. We gave it away. Breathing in. We handed these posers the keys to the kingdom. This Best Picture winner garnered three additional statues for its sharp-tongued screenplay, Alejandro G. Iñárritu's rousing direction, and Emmanuel Lubezki's cinematography, which seamlessly creates the sensation of an extended tracking shot. Alas, the Academy failed to honor the person arguably the most responsible for Birdman's success. Michael Keaton may deny just how autobiographical his performance is, but it's impossible not to draw parallels in this story of an actor struggling to escape the superhero who made him iconic. Keaton's performance is an internal battle of the egos between Riggan Thompson and his alter ego, embodying the film's central themes of mainstream success versus artistic integrity and realism versus flights of fancy. Keaton settled for a nomination, but in our book, he was the best actor. You know what I mean? Do you know what this is? Do you even know what that is? You don't. You know why? Because you can't see this thing if you don't know how to label it. 2015, Spotlight. In past, Spotlight's had success in large part because they picked their own projects. Would you consider picking this one? Alejandro Iñárritu won his second Best Director Oscar for The Revenant, but Best Picture caught some awards prognosticators off guard. There was little doubt that Tom McCarthy's Spotlight would walk away with Best Original Screenplay, but the indie drama wasn't favored to reign anywhere else. After missing in five other categories, the producers seemed as stunned as anybody when Spotlight became the first Best Picture victor since 1952's The Greatest Show on Earth to only win one other award. Spotlight deservingly won not only for its haunting exploration of the Catholic Church scandal, but for capturing the importance of investigative journalism. The film's relevance would continue to grow with the rise of fake news, lying world leaders, and people reluctant to accept the truth. It's time, Robbie! It's time! They knew, and they let it happen! 2016, Moonlight. The La La Land mix-up might have dominated the headlines, but that shouldn't take away from the prominence of Moonlight's Best Picture win over a decade after Brokeback Mountain was denied the honor. Along with the LGBTQ population, the film was a landmark for the black community, who have been largely underrepresented at the Oscars along with other people of color. Cultural relevance aside, Moonlight is a beautiful, tear-jerking, and deeply personal story about identity. The film challenges stereotypes through Mahershala Ali's best supporting actor turn as Juan, a drug dealer who becomes an unlikely father figure to Chiron. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you are. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. Barry Jenkins' Oscar-winning script chronicles Chiron's journey of self-discovery as he grapples with what the world expects him to be and who he is underneath. I'm the only one. I haven't really touched anyone since. 2017, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Right now, there ain't too much more we can do. Could pull blood from every man and boy in this town over the age of eight. Now more than ever, people like to see the world in black and white with no middle ground. Rebelling against a flawed system is always vindicated, someone with a prejudice can't have any redeeming qualities, and if we're loud enough, justice will be served in the end. This Martin McDonough film understands that the world isn't that simple. Frances McDormand's Mildred is an empathetic, grieving mother, but her crusade for closure only brings others pain. Sam Rockwell's Jason is a bigot, but there is potential for personal growth. Just when it appears the story might be wrapped up in a tidy package, McDonough bluntly reminds us that sometimes life has no answers. It's a difficult yet thought-provoking film, scoring Oscars for McDormand and Rockwell's uncompromising performances. I'm sorry I got your hopes up. That's all right. That's all right. At least I had a day of hoping, and that's more than I've had for a while. 2018, Roma. This dude that I was dating in Durham. Ah, pues. Está bien, no? 
once again, the Academy's Old Guard flexed their muscles with Green Book winning Best Picture over the widely favored Roma. We're not entirely shocked, as Alfonso Cuaron's drama requires its audience to look past its simple surface to discover something truly profound. Roma is a masterclass of visual storytelling, delving into the characters' souls through an enlightening black-and-white lens. Cuaron said that about 90% of the film was inspired by memories and photographs, which shines through in the execution. Some memories are so traumatic you never forget them. Others seem trivial at first, but stick with us for reasons we can't quite explain. Likewise, it's hard to articulate why Roma resonates, but its Oscars for Best Director, Cinematography, and Foreign Language Film say everything. Right, Cleo? 2019, Parasite. <laughs> A year after the Green Book debacle, the Academy got back on track with one of the best Best Picture winners ever. Beyond Best International Feature, Bong Joon-ho wasn't expecting to make many trips to the stage on Oscar night. He ended up returning three times to accept Oscars for Best Original Screenplay, Director, and Picture, a first for a film outside of the English language. Parasite told a universal as well as gripping story about three families, one wealthy, one poor, and one hiding in plain sight. As for who the title Parasite is, the layered answer is where the genius of this jaw-dropping film resides. The only thing better than experiencing Parasite yourself is watching it with an audience as the twists unfold. <laughs> Two thousand twenty, Nomad Land. But really, Fern, if if you need a place to stay, you can come over and stay with us. We're worried about you. Thanks, don't worry about me. I'll let you know, I promise. Watching a movie with an audience became next to impossible in the months following Parasite's Oscar win. Although Nomadland finished shooting before the pandemic, Chloe Zhao inadvertently made a movie that summed up 2020. Two years after the Great Recession, Frances McDormand's Fern finds herself out of work. Having lost her husband, too, she decides to adopt the life of a nomad, living out of a van while experiencing the great outdoors. It's a lonely life, but now and then, Fern manages to connect with strangers. Among other things, this Best Picture winner is about moving forward, even if you don't know what's on the horizon. Zhao took a substantial leap forward as the second female Best Director winner, while McDormand accepted her third Best Actress Oscar. And that means that your love never ends. And you may not be able to take it off if you tried. Don't think it could. 2021, Coda. Oh, oh, here we go. She won the Yankee Miss Pageant. On the heels of such an emotionally draining year, the Academy gravitated towards a quintessential feel-good movie that left us a little more hopeful. Coda didn't have the biggest Oscar nomination morning with just three. Leading up to the ceremony, though, Sean Hader's indie darling kept gaining momentum, pulling off a sweep for her screenplay, Troy Kotzer's sincere supporting performance, and Best Picture. Coda centers on a family that communicates through sign language, with teenager Ruby being the only hearing member. Discovering her passion for music, Ruby fears that there's a part of herself that her family will never understand. Through the universal language of love, Ruby's family connects in one of the most life-affirming final acts of any movie this century. It's love's illusions, I recall. I really don't know love at all. 2022, everything, everywhere, all at once. I'm here because we need your help. Very busy today, a whole time to help you. There's a great evil that has taken root in my world, and it's begun spreading its chaos throughout the many verses. Even as it generated widespread acclaim and broke box office records for A24, some were skeptical if the Academy would embrace the Daniels' bizarre multiverse movie. Those fears diminished as Ki Hui Kwan and Jamie Lee Curtis picked up Oscars for Best Supporting Actor and Actress, respectively. Of the film's seven Oscars, the only win more gratifying than Best Picture was seeing Michelle Yeoh become the second woman of color to accept Best Actress. Yeoh gave a versatile performance 
performance as a middle-aged woman flung into impossible scenarios involving sentient rocks, culinary raccoons, and hot dog fingers. For all the styles Everything Everywhere throws at us, this is fundamentally a family drama about a mother connecting with her daughter and discovering the best version of herself. I will always, always want to be here with you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2023, Oppenheimer. Izzy, I don't know if we can be trusted with such a weapon, but I know the Nazis can't. In terms of Academy recognition, Christopher Nolan is the Steven Spielberg of his generation. Directing one audience favorite after another, both raked up their fair share of Oscar nominations, but a win always seemed out of reach. It's been argued that Oppenheimer is to Nolan what Schindler's List was to Spielberg. Oppenheimer managed to exceed that classic by one nomination, leading with 13. In addition to first-time nominees Killian Murphy and Emily Blunt, the Academy recognized Robert Downey Jr. for his commanding supporting performance as Louis Strauss. This is Nolan's moment above all else, though, delivering on the spectacle we've come to expect from him while also painting an intimate portrait of a reserved man who shook the world with bombastic noise and dead silence. When I came to you with those calculations, we thought we might start a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world. Which 21st century movie would you give all the Oscars? Cast your vote in the comments. You're capable of anything because you're so bad at everything. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.